Good morning. Oh, come on. I need some more enthusiasm than that. Who is happy to be here on this glorious day? Hey, before I do one other thing, and y'all got to help me here. Can we rejoice together that Roe v. Wade got overturned? Can we just give the Lord? Come on. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. How many of you guys, how many of you guys know Lou Engle? Everybody knows Papa Lou, right? That man has faithfully been fasting and praying and gathering hundreds of thousands of people for two decades. And you know what his prayer has been? God end abortion and God send revival to America. You know what? Roe v. Wade just got overturned. I believe revival is also coming. Amen? Amen. Woo, come on. I, I, I am so excited today. Can y'all feel the buzz in the air? There's like, ah. So I'm not going to sit up here and talk much, but uh, I want to welcome everybody. I know we're going to have some new people here today. Welcome anybody that's not been to the Father's house before. Super excited to have my friend Etienne with us today. How many of you guys know Etienne? Some of you know Etienne. Uh, this is going to be a blessing. And, uh, and Bonnie, thank you for coming today. What a blessing. Uh, didn't know you were coming. Glad that you're here. Um, but we are most glad that the Lord is here. Amen? And so we're going to make much of honoring Him today. We're going to make much of His presence. We're going to make much of drawing near to Him today. Um, so I want to do this. Once we start the flow of this service, I'm not going to interrupt it. I'm not going to stop it again. So I want to like knock stuff out right out of the gate. First of all, children, if you got little kids uh, in our children's building up here, we actually do have a really nice nursery changing tables if you got diaper age kids mm -hmm. if you got screaming kids if you got whatever we have a place uh it also has tvs over there so you can still watch the service from there uh and somebody can help you get up there if you've never been um also uh we don't pass offering plates or anything around here but we've got a thing by the door so just whatever you guys are normally doing is fine but today I'm going to go ahead and tell you up front, we want to take up a love offering for our friend Etienne today too. How many of you guys are in agreement with that? Um, I don't believe in not blessing folks. So we're going to, we're going to bless Etienne for coming today. And so uh, you can make a check out to the Father's house or you can, uh, we've got an app you can give through. We can even text to give. Does it? Yeah, the 84321. It actually works. I've tried it. Um, I don't know how you can text something to a phone and it shoots money. to. I don't know, but it works. Um, so thank you, Jesus, for technology. Um, but hey, I want to show you guys one more thing before we get started. Can you go to this next screen? As you can see, we're starting to get a little packed in here. Uh, that small building is what we're in right now. The bigger building is actually going right behind me. Did you guys know? Uh, we're getting ready to break ground on this. This is like really close to, to happening. Uh, scroll to that next one. There's an inside view. So we're getting ready to uh, double and a half this space because we need room to grow. And uh, we know that this right here is a little too small for where we're going. But thank you, Jesus. And you want to know the best part? You ready for this? We're not going to borrow one penny to do this. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Jesus. Uh, we've been debt free from day one and we're going to stay that way. Amen. God provides and he gives what we need when we need it. Amen. So thank you, Jesus, for that. I think I'm good. I think I'm done with yapping, but I'm so thankful for what God's going to do in here today. Jenny, you want to come on up? For those of you who don't know, this is my much better half. This is Jenny, and if you haven't met Baby Jackson, uh, Hetty's back there holding sweet Baby Jackson. He's two months old. Uh, but we're going to get into worship. How many of you guys came here today to worship Jesus? Amen. Amen. He's worthy always. So I think she's going to play a video give me time to get in the drum booth. That's yours. Right.
Praise God. Let's everybody stand and worship. Jesus, Jesus. Let's just say his name, Jesus. Woo. Tell you, two of my friends here this morning, Dawn and Valerie, they've got the red and the fiery orange hair, and the Lord was just reminding me this morning that the fiery trials, they're not bad. They're bringing us in deeper and closer to the one whose eyes burn like fire. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We love you, Jesus, and we praise you this morning. You alone are worth it all. You're worth it, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's worship the Lamb of God.
creation will come to the light. Will come to the light, Jesus. And all the people will sing your praises. All the people will sing your praises. All the people will sing your praises. Worthy is the Lamb of God. All the people will sing. the reward of his suffering every nation and every single soul
stops, it never stops. Oh, around the throne, around the throne, day and night, night and day. Oh, day and night, night and day, day and night, night and day. Oh, it never stops, it never ends. Oh, holy is the Lord, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy
We bow before you. We go low. No one is exalted in your presence. We bow to the king. We honor the king. Because there's only one worthy. There's only one worthy. We honor you, God. We bless you. We love you, God. We worship you this morning. We love you, God. We were created to worship. Furthermore, we were created for his pleasure. Sometimes we make it about us, but no. (laughs) We're created for him. He doesn't serve us. We serve him. But we love him because he loved us first. (laughs) Amen. Lord, we honor you this morning. We thank you for being here with us, God, being close to us. Aren't you glad that our God's not distant? He's not far off. He's as close as your breath. What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Jesus. Just one more time with your own words. Can we just extol the Lord? Father, we love you. We honor you. We bless you. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. You are are perfect. You are pure. You are righteous in everything you do. You are a good father. And we bless you today. We bless your name. We love you, God. We love you, God. There's no one we love more than you. And God, we honor you this morning. We honor your presence here with us. We honor you, God. Thank you, Lord, for drawing near. We're living for you, God, and for your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you guys, but I'm at a point in my life where the presence of God is number one. I want to be near him. I want to be close to him. I want to be with him. Amen. I know you feel the same way or you would have already left. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're getting a little taste of heaven, aren't we? When Jenny was up here singing, holy, 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 you know what they're doing right now? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, who is to come. You start singing like that, you join heaven. 
And you know what happens when that happens? Heaven starts joining earth. And there's this symphony that starts happening between heaven and earth. You guys know what I'm talking about. Whew. Etienne, come on, man. I'm going to have to put this mic down and go lay down on the floor somewhere. <laughs> Bless you guys. Welcome, my dear friend, my brother, Mr. Etienne. Is it Blom or Bloom? I never say it right. Blom. Etienne Blom. Love you, brother. Thanks, Chris. Good morning, all. Good morning. It's, really, it's really an honor to be here. Spend some time, and I know we're going to have a good time in God's presence. And I must say, the worship was awesome. Our encounter and worship was taking into, into heaven and suddenly we, all of us, and I'm talking about all of creation, are covering the whole of Mount Zion and heaven. And I saw this massive throne in, and Yahweh the great I am stood there. And he smiled and he stood up the next moment and I saw fire, um, fireworks, I saw lightning. And the next moment the angels, the myriads of angels, kings, priests, clouds of witnesses, you name it, all of creation, heavenly beings just worshipped and worshipped. And he stood up and he acknowledged it and he stretched out his hands. And I just saw gold and fire and glory coming out of his hand. And it's like he, he painted each and every one of us in flakes of gold. And the fire and the sparks just went and we just worshipped and worshipped. So I believe, I truly believe if he shows us that, that is what's happening. So what God comes and he acknowledges your worship in spirit and truth. And when we do it in spirit of truth, it means you and I just received a massive increase. We've been set apart this morning. You've increased leaps and bounds. And what happens now when we worship in spirit and truth, it means that instead of just growing and accelerating in your life step by step, he takes hundreds and thousands of yards of steps to accelerate you. So he puts you in a season of acceleration because you stood in front of him in spirit and truth. And that's why it's so important when you worship God, it comes out of the inner essence, the center of your heart. It's not mere melodies and a nice sound that we are releasing. It is releasing, it's reflecting back to Him. His heart, His sound, His frequency, His vibration, His energy. And what happens when there is a, a, let's say, communication between us and him, a reflection of energy and glory and sound and frequency, it means wherever you and I stand, we affect all of creation. We are releasing that frequency to all of creation and nobody else and nothing else in creation can but acknowledge God. What an honor, what a privilege. You need to realize what a privilege is to sing unto him. What an honor it is. We're not standing here and sitting here this morning in the presence of, let's say, the president of a country or whoever. The great I am. The great I am is here. To Father, we acknowledge and we receive you. We host you in this place. 
as the great I am. As a king of kings and the lord of lords, a creator of heaven and earth. The one that is perfect love. The faithful one, the anointed one. One whose words never fall on the ground, whose words are yea and amen. The exalted one, the glorified one. So Father, this morning we just want to exalt you, we want to glorify you, we want to lift you up high. We want to come in union with you in such a way that you get glorified, that you get revealed, where it's impossible for people not to see you. Where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, Jesus is King. So Lord, we open up our minds, our hearts, our souls, our spirit. We come in full surrender unto you and say, Lord, consume us. We declare we've got eyes to see and ears to hear. That the fullness of the God of three and ones inside of us. That nothing is impossible. That you are our life. That you are our next breath. You are our King, our God, and our Father. Lord, we also welcome this morning. We acknowledge all the angels, the clouds of witnesses, seven spirits of God, the men in white linen, kings, priests, saints. We acknowledge him, Father, but we come and we say, we only worship you. Bless this house, bless this people, Lord. And in this Meeting now. My request is that each and every one will encounter you in a new way. That they'll feel you, they'll taste you, they'll smell you, they'll see you. They'll be in awe and amazement of you. And that's presence that's here right now, they'll carry it into every place where they go from now on into eternity. And we say thank you in the name of the Shua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. So I don't know where's little Jackson. Is Jackson out at the moment? Okay. I've got a word for Jackson. So last night I was praying, sitting in And the next moment, I was on a hill in the fields and grass fields and hills and just flowing. And I saw this giant walking. And the Lord said to me, look at his heart. And I thought, Lord, but this is unusual. This is not a heart of man. This is unusual, it's huge, it has been courageous, it's been strong, it is powerful, but it's got so much love. And then the Lord told me, and said, do you know who that is? And I was standing there and looking and I thought, Lord, I've got no idea. (laughs) And he said, this is Jackson. He said, don't ever make the mistake to look at him in the natural. He said, he's my giant. He set apart. He said, I've given, him the, I've given him the ability of Joshua. I've given him Joshua's heart. I made him strong and courageous. I said, but I've given him so much love. 
And that's why he's going to walk in so much power and authority where he walks. He's going to change the world. And then he said he'll be so strong and he'll have so much faith because he has already encountered me in hospital. He already has an encounters and experience in hospital, he said, because now I have released the anointing that I've released upon Gideon as well. That Joshua, even if nobody else wants to walk with him, Jackson will walk. And he'll fulfill so many miracles that people will be in awe and amazement. And he'll speak, and it will happen, because he loves me. So I bless Jackson with that. I will never say little Jackson again, the giant Jackson. I bless you with that. Let's talk about the father's house. The first time... uh, Chris brought me to show me the building. I saw the excitement. He gave me the testimony, and it's amazing. And I, Hetty, and myself got such an excitement in us. Because I saw what the Lord's going to do. And last night and the night before, um, he took me into many encounters, visions, dreams, and I know in places in heaven. And there are different dimensions what he's going to do here and what he's planning here. And firstly, he said, because of Chris and Jenny and the leadership obedience, I'm going to bless them. They stepped out. They stepped out in obedience. Even through gossip and slander and persecution, they kept their eyes on me. I'm going to bless it. And it will be the outpouring of Joel too. It will be the outpouring of his glory and his abundance. He said, and I've put them through the test, Chris and Jenny. He said, I've put them in the fire, but there's a scripture that says, and there's a ring of fire around you, but inside I stand in the fullness of my glory. And when the Lord showed me, he said, I am in the fullness of my glory in your lives, Chris and Jenny and your children, and in Father's house. And the next moment, I was taken, let's call it a realm or a place, and I stood and I looked upon the Father's house. And I saw hundreds, thousands of children, probably from little ones to the ages of five, six, seven, and they stood, and the next moment... They transformed. And they all stood like this. And if you've seen bodybuilders, like the big men, the big heavy bodybuilders, and these little children all got transformed in these massive this little guys, but they're all strong bodybuilders. And they ran into the streets. But they had the ability as well to give big leaps and jumps. And some of them jumped from here across to other states. And a few of them jumped into other nations. But what was strange to me, and this morning when I looked at the worship and I I revisited that encounter, all of them stood with their their mouths like this. The whole time, and a sound came out of their mouths. But it was a perfect sound. And then the Lord took me to the scripture in Hebrew 1 where he says, I maintain and I uphold all of creation through my mighty word of power, my sound. And he said, "These, I'm taking this place, Father's house, and I'm going to create and equip a generation of youth that will maintain and uphold all of creation. They're just going to walk in the streets. They're not going to speak words. They're just going to open their mouths and release God's sound. And bring back the glory of earth. Bring back the praise and the worship that needs to be released on the earth for the great one. The great I am. They're going to do it. And hey, when they release the sound, great miracles and things is going to happen. The people going to stand up out of their wheelchairs. People is just going to get slain when they walk and they just stand in the streets. So God's raising up a radical generation of youth in this place. Father's house will always be a house of worship. 
So I also saw this place as a sound, as a beacon, as an altar, as a pillar in the temple of God of worship. And a lot of worshipers will be equipped to release, equipped to release. And this is also a prophetic house, and it will be a house of power evangelism. So people will come in and will go out. And there will come a time in the season where people will stand in queues and lines to get in. And people will know across the nation and nations out there, this is a place where God dwells. Where they want to come and experience and visit Yahweh. The key is to always keep your eyes on him. Don't move to the left. Don't move to the right. Don't ever look in the natural. Look above. You seated above your circumstances. You seated above everything. I want to make it clear to each and every one of you here. It includes you. It's not just Chris and Denny and the family and the leadership. All of you have been chosen to be here. So nothing is impossible. Amen. Bless you of it. Keys of the season. I want to talk to you, give you a a few keys of the season. Because everything that we prophesy must manifest. As I prayed earlier on, God is yea and amen. His words does not fall to the ground. And these words that are spoken has got to do with your lives as well. The question is, what is your desire for it to manifest? It's not merely receiving the word. Is what are you going to do? How are you going to position so that the word can fall into alignment, so that the word could be activated. So I'm going to give you a few keys that you need to do or to reposition yourself so everything manifests. The first one, and all of us know it, Psalm 46.10. Let be and be still. I'm reading out of the Amplified. Let be and be still and know, recognize and understand that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted in the earth. So the first thing that you need to do is that you need to acknowledge God as the one, the exalted one above everything. Not merely in your own life, above everything. Everything. So what does it mean? He needs to be honored. He needs to be glorified. He needs to be exalted in every aspect of your life and other people's lives. So what do we need? We need to step into that place of excellence. Colossians 3 verse 17 to 21 where it basically says, where I'm paraphrasing, Do everything as if God is doing it himself. Glorify him in everything. So what do we need to do? We need to move into excellence. And what excellence do we have to move in? God created it and Chris said it this morning. We are representing him. We are glorifying him. So what do we need to do? I need to step into excellence to reveal him. So what do I need to ask myself? If people look at me, if people encounter me, if people see me and we stand in conversations, do they encounter God? Is there passion in your life to reveal Christ? Let's test it quickly. If Jesus had to walk into this place right now in the natural, would you sit in the same way? Would we? No. No. 
we would have sat here with such an attitude. Because we are kings and priests in his order, the order of Melchizedek. We are sitting in the council in the room of the great I am in stillness. Because you would sit with such an expectation to hear his voice. Even if he does not talk, just to gaze upon him. Be still is to be positioned in that place of awe and amazement and an expectation. I expect them each and every second to walk in here now. I know he's here. We felt him during worship. We feel him now. But your expectation should not merely be to feel him, to feel to taste him, to, to hear him, but where are you? Manifest. I had an encounter in Nairobi and Kenya, and we did a big crusade, and, off, and many miracles happened, man. The deaf saw, the blind, or the deaf heard, the blind saw. <laughs> People stood up with the wheel trays. Oh, it was amazing. So I sat with my team one night, just before midnight, we're having dinner and discussing the amazement of God, the goodness. And I heard him saying, it can go to your room. I want to come and visit you. So I left my food. I stood up. I went to my room and I waited and I waited. And later on, the Holy Spirit said, go to bed, sleep. And I stood up and said, Lord, that's fine. I'll go and sleep. Even if you don't come and visit me. Said, but when I sleep, I want to be aware of you. I want to be aware that I'm sleeping in the palm of your hand. I want so many dreams and visions in this night to know that you've been with me. And I went to bed. I got up early. Didn't come. And I'll never forget it. At 10 to 6 in the morning, I sat and I realized I had so many dreams and visions that night. And I could truly say, I knew I was in the palm of his hand. And then I stood up and I prayed. I said, Lord, I want to say thank you. And when I said it, my whole room suddenly exploded in a big light. And when I turned around, he was standing there. Jesus stood in my room in the natural with two angels. And he said, because you said thank you spoke to me quickly and he left next night we had the same crusade sat at the table the same happened said do you think I can come and visit you again tonight I said yes Lord I went to my room immediately waited but when I went to my room and entered my room I thought Etienne how arrogant can you be to think that Jesus is coming to visit you twice Two nights in a row. Most people don't see him even once in the natural on earth. Who do you think you are? You're full of pride. Waited, didn't come, wait to bed, stood up, stood up that morning early, read Bible, prayed. It's like everything was dead. I could not hear his voice. I could not see in the spirit, nothing. And at eight o'clock that morning, I suddenly heard his voice and he said to me, why did I not come and visit you? I said, I don't know, Lord. He said, you need to know I am God. If I want to, I can visit you every day. From now on, I want you to tell the people to be expectant of me visiting them every day. Nothing less. Why does he want to do it? Why does he want to reveal it? Because we're supposed to acknowledge and to administrate the outpouring of God. When we're in the seat of stillness, in awe and amazement, we allow him to be God, to reveal himself. 
so that we could reveal it, so that he can teach and equip us. Because how does man work? We step in faith on what we see. The more we see, the more we become. Because not all of us are taking what the scripture says, faith is moving in the unseen. So what does God want to do? He wants to bless you because the more that you reveal him, the more he gives you increase. He wants you to experience his fullness. Not just a measure, he said his fullness. Colossians 2 says, the fullness of the God at three and ones inside of you. So what do I need to do? So I need to be still. Don't do what most people do when they try and engage God at night. They, don't, they ain't still. We come with our shopping list to them, what we need. And we keep on talking. If we don't hear his voice, we, we talk even more. What does he say? Zephaniah, Zephaniah 3, 2, verse 3. Seek the Lord, inquire for him, inquire of him. And require him as the foremost necessity of your life. All you humble of the land who have acted in compliance with his revealed will and have kept his commandments, seek righteousness, seek humility, inquire for them, require them as vital. It may be you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. I want you to be honest with yourself. Have you inquired, required God as a vital necessity? Is a difference of just going to sit in your room and to pray. To inquire of God and to require is by acknowledging, Lord, without you, I could not exist. Amen. You are my next breath. When we inquire and require, it's a positioning of the heart. Why do we inquire and require of Him? Because He's the creator of heaven and earth. All wisdom, power, authority, understanding, love, joy, peace, everything is seated in Him. And we're supposed to manifest Him. We're supposed to bring the glory of God onto the earth, restore the earth, bring the as it is in heaven. But your inquiring and requiring of him must be, Lord, because you my first love. Not because of me want to walk the streets and be this great guy doing all the miracles and the hero of the world, doing the impossible things, but as to reveal him. I want to inquire and require of you, Lord. This is important in my life because I want to show the world the truth of who my God is. Because the world is in chaos of us not revealing the truth of Him. And this will be a test of your true love. How much time do you spend in stillness inquiring and requiring from him? Yeah, but Etienne, I'm too busy. I haven't really got time to read my Bible. I haven't really got time to pray. But when things go wrong, then you've got time. 
strange how things change. Then we become beggars. God never created beggars. He created kings. I hide myself in the darkness. When you find me, I become your light, your glory. First, we need to come to the place of stillness. It's where we, by our waiting in, setting aside our own agendas to make ourselves available for Him and His agendas. Firstly, we need to get still. Why? In stillness, in the revelation of Christ, you'll get back to that place of awe and amazement. What comes in your heart? Joy, Nehemiah. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy is the release of the power and the authority of love. Joy can never be separated from peace and rest. So God, when we sit in awe and amazement and peace and rest, gaze upon Him. You come back into union with Him. Your sound, your frequency, your vibration enters into every dimension around you and transform people and things around you without you even talking. But just being. Do you realize what a powerful instrument you are? By just sitting here right now, by just being, you have an effect. And the effect you're going to have is going to be according to the positioning of your heart. When you seat it with Christ in stillness, in union, unity, it means that you're seated on Mount Zion. And what does the word say in Hebrews? In the new Jerusalem. You're already seated there. On Mount Zion, in the new Jerusalem. Go and read Hebrews. Go and read Psalm 46. What happens now? You're in your kingly position of authority where you're You've got a kingdom perspective and a kingdom view. Now you can step out because you've got a kingdom view, a kingdom perspective. And you can release the prophetic word that's been released here. You could become it. Because now it's not just about believing it, it's seeing it. So now it's being it because it exists. Next key, Psalm 27. Verse 4, he says, One thing I've asked of the Lord, that will I seek, inquire for, and insist in, insistently require that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, in His presence all the days of my life, to behold and gaze upon the beauty, the sweet, the sweet attractiveness and the delightful loveliness of the Lord, and to meditate, to consider and inquire in His temple. What He said, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. This was David speaking, so what happened now? After the cross, transformation happened, you are the house. So you are dwelling in Christ, in his house, and you become the house. So you are the host of heaven. You are the carrier of the great I am. That's something to praise and worship a lot. The greatest gift of us. Greatest gift in us is God, and you have Him inside of you, and you inside of Him.
For in the day of trouble he will hide me in his shelter, in the secret place of his tent will he hide me. He will set me high upon the rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. And his tent I will offer sacrifice and shouting of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing his praises. And verse 8 he said, You have said, seek my face, inquire for and require my presence as your vital need. Where now you've got ability to become his presence. You are God's presence here. My heart says to you, your face, your presence, Lord, will I seek, inquire for and require of necessity on the authority of your word. Your face will I seek. Seeking comes out of position of being still. Psalm 4610. It's allowing God to reveal himself. Being still. It's not talking all the time. Seeking comes when you praise and worship this morning in spirit and truth. Praise and worship comes in spirit and truth when you have encountered God. When you have testimonies of God. When you start tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. Where He is your first love. Above everything. You will seek. Seeking means wherever you dwell, wherever you move, whatever you look at, you see God in it. Even the walls, even the chairs, even the carpets. What about God is it? What is so unique about God and everything? Because the sound of God, the touch of God, the voice of God is in all of creation. He even said, even the stones will worship me. So the reality is where you and I walk, all of creation needs to start worshiping and praising because of whom you walk with and whom you are busy revealing. Reality is, whatever I touch, it gets transformed. Even the seat where you sit on now. If people sit on that, they must encounter God. If people go and sit on your chair, they must get saved, they must get healed. They must start crying out to your way. That's what a son of God does. Everything intentional. And the intention is to reveal my Father in heaven. (coughs) But I can only do it when I'm still in peace and rest and where I listen. God says, I like it in the Passion Translation, he said in Proverbs 20, 12. To all the lovers of God. Lover of God means, if you go and research it, the ones that has me as first love. I have given eyes to see and ears to hear with spiritual discernment. But the key is, in Exodus 33, 14 with Moses, where he talks and he says, my presence Some um, translations say, and my peace, and some said, and my rest shall always be with you. Always. 
Because that's where it goes you. It takes you in a place of stillness, of peace and rest, where you can hear and see clearly. But that's where your authority comes out. If you have not got peace and rest, you have got no authority. Because you're in your soul dimension now. And believe me, all of creation knows it because of the sound, the frequency, and the vibration you release. In the spiritual realm, you get acknowledged. Your authority gets acknowledged by your sound. Not how loud you speak or how much you shout to the demons or whatever. They know if you're in peace and rest. Peace and rest means I know who my God is. I know whom I am and who's in me. I know that in Genesis, he gave me power and authority to reign, to manifest him on earth, to instruct, to uphold, to maintain all of creation and nothing can resist it. If I speak the name of the Lord, it's yea and amen. It will not fall to the ground. Go to Acts. Acts 13, verse 22. This is your next key. And when he had deposed him, he raised up David to be the king. Of him he bore witness and says, and this is the important part, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will do all my will and carry out my program fully. Why? And if you look at David's lifestyle, what is part of David's lifestyle? Meditation. He said, and David meditated on the goodness of God. He even says, when I went to bed at night, I meditated on God's goodness. When I woke up, I'm still meditating. So what happens? David encountered God all day because he was intentional to glorify God. He had God as his first love. A man up to God's heart that said he always fulfilled what God instructed him. Even in John 17, Jesus speaks. He said, Father, everything you told me to do, I have done. Meditation is to clear yourself for God to fill you, to step into friendship. Friendship is rahan. It means to be consumed by God. A friend means to be consumed by God. That's why he calls you my best friend. I'm consuming you. How does it happen? When I'm in stillness and allow him to be God in myself. So, What is meditation? It means to commune with God. It also means to take care of. Whoa. When did you last take care of creation? I'm serious. If we say we are so in love of God, why is the world in the state? Because God says, I maintain and uphold all of creation from my mighty word of power. So God came to you and said, you my voice, you represent me. You need to maintain earth. So speak over it. Amen. Not No physical labor, speak over it. Release my will, my purpose, exactly what David did. That's why David could praise, he could worship. Because he had a view of God's goodness, God's faithfulness, God's mercy, God's grace. Most of all, God's love every day. He could praise and worship. And this time and season, praise and worship are of such importance. Just for interest sake. Who... What do you call it? Ordain soul? Or what do you call it? Who? Um, what do you call it? Who, who, 
when oil was anointed, when oil was anointed, when Saul was anointed, <laughs> when Saul got anointed as king, who did it? Samuel. What did he tell Samuel? What is God's word upon Samuel? Samuel, your words will never fall to the ground. Samuel was the only one eligible in creation at that time and season to anoint um, David. Why? Where did Samuel sleep? Right in the presence of God at the altar of the tabernacle. He slept in the holy of holies. So Samuel was one with God and that's why he said, Lord, speak, Lord, your servant is listening and serving God means I am a one to you so that I could reveal. So he was the only one because of Samuel lying next to the um, covenant, the tabernacle and everything. He was the only one with the sound, the frequencies, the vibration, the energy of God to transfer it into a king appointed by God. So it's to always stay in that place of intimacy with God in the Holy of Holies. And what does God say? He created you in Ephesians to be the Holy of Holies. Question is, do you dwell there? Dwelling there means I walk in the knowing awareness of God all the time. With an intention. That's why David said, Lord, let your spirit never depart from me. to commune, to focus one's mind for special, for a period of time in silence, to murmur, to ponder, to speak silently. How do you speak silently? Your thoughts. Your thoughts releases a sound, a frequency, a vibration. Your thoughts releases energy. What you're thinking, you're creating. Do you realize that? How does the devil know what you attack you with? Have you ever ask yourself that? Because sometimes you go through so many attacks, you think, how does he know it? Put you in the picture. What happens in the spiritual realm? It's time and season that man get to know the spirit realm. He says in his word, in 1 Corinthians 2 and everything, it's not by the flesh, but by the spirit. You need to acknowledge everything is in the spirit. Nothing are hidden in the spirit realm. So whatever you think forms hologram structures in the spirit. So what does the devil do in his darkness? They read your holograms. They know exactly what you're thinking. That's why your heart needs to be in alignment and purity with God. Next key is nothing are hidden to the sons of God. Nothing. And we need to embrace it. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18 is about Look not, look to the unseen because the unseen is eternal and the seen is temporal. Where are your eyes focused on? Are they focused on the unseen or are they focused on the seen? Do you realize when we sit in the presence of God, when we sit in a place of stillness, in the inner essence, the center of his heart, nothing are hidden to you. Nothing. You and I have got access to everything. So if it's the outpouring of the Spirit of the Lord of Joel 2 upon this house and upon creation, 
you and I need to administrate, to steward His glory, His love, His power, as it is in heaven. We cannot afford to look in the scene. Even in your dark circumstances and your trials and tribulations, don't look in the natural because what you behold with your eyes, what you engage you in power and you become that. You put yourself in bondage. So gaze upon the Son of Man. Become that. And it says, darkness flees. You become an untouchable one. We're afraid to say that because we don't know our God. The reality is you become untouchable. Show me a demon or darkness in heaven. Because the devil hates the sound, the frequency, the vibration of the Holy of Holies. He hates true worship because he used to be the worship leader and it reminds him of what he had and he'll never have it again in his life because it belongs to you as well. I want you to realize today, you have been set apart. You've been chosen by God. You've been appointed by God. You've been ordained by God. You've been equipped by God. You lack nothing. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Because your reaction shows your true love. We in our church, we starting to impact the community in quite a way. Sundays after service, some services, we all go, the whole church, into the streets, the homeless and jobless, and feed them, help them, pray for them, bring in souls, do whatever we can. And you'll get some people that I don't go with because, no, this is not for me. It's not my anointing. Really? When you firstly fell in love with your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, you wanted to show that person to everybody. But you don't want to show Jesus to everybody. You don't want to give life and hope to everybody? Is that love? It's not for me. But if we want some that is for me, you've heard a few things this morning. And again I ask, how are you going to react because you've got no excuse anymore? How's your life changed this morning? And it's not how bad your life was, what you have done. I've probably been one of the biggest sinners on this earth ever. Before I got saved. But when I made a choice, everything changed. I've seen his face. I've seen over one and a half million souls coming into the kingdom. I've seen over one and a half million miracles and healings. I've seen resurrections that the Lord has done. Got heaven encounters every day of my life, being transported, being translated, getting transfigured. Not because I'm special, because you are special. You and I have got exactly the same God. But it's about first love. Radical obedience. And no compromise. You will get what 
what you put in. You will get according to your desires, but he'll always outgive you. And the more you seek him, the more you see him, the more you realize you know nothing. And the more the hunger comes upon you. But Lord, we're not supposed to look like this. We're not supposed to sit here like this. We're supposed to sit here all transfigured at least. And we're all supposed to sit in the room of counsel in heaven and releasing God's glory from heaven. And it's in you. It's in you, people. These things that we talk is nothing impossible. It's nothing strange. This is the natural life of a son of God. That every day you could go to bed, you can meditate on God. His goodness. Every day is a day of testimonies. Every day when you read the word, you encounter him. You get revelation. You get taken into the spirit realm. He gives you the knowledge, the wisdom, understanding. The word comes alive. You. He takes you to yesterday, to today, tomorrow. Nothing are hidden. That's ability because you're in Christ. Nothing are hidden to you. Nothing is impossible. And the word is full of it. And it's for now. This is the greatest season, time of existence. And it's your choice. How are you going to participate with God? God wants to give you the full measure. It's available. Take it. Amen. What I'm going to do, have we got time, Chris? I can do importation if you want to, just to bring back, activate that first love. And to activate peace and rest. How do I do it? You're just going to stand in front of me. I'm just going to touch your hands. I don't want you to look at me. Don't look what he's going to do. I want you to focus on God. That's all you're going to do. I'm just going to touch your hands. Don't worry if you're going to get slain or not. It's not up to me. There will be somebody behind you. Or at least an angel. Or if there's nothing, you have a soft landing. <laughs> and you just receive. I want you to leave this place and creation need to start worshiping. I need, want you to leave this place as a revelation of Jesus. And Lord, just come, consume me. Don't do what some people do. Immediately if you come and they stand, I'm not going to fall. <laughs> Suddenly they're power angels or something like that. <laughs> don't. Lord, I don't care what you do with me. As long as your fullness gets activated in me. It's already in you. Don't worry about what the person next to you is going to say. It's got nothing to do with them. It's about them. As soon as you think about other people and what they say and think about being slain or not slain, you're in your soul then it's not about him anymore. Just allow God to touch you. You're not going to be Indian. God's going to touch you. Amen. So, We're going to remove these first two rows, if you guys don't mind. We'll just take them right out. So I don't even care. You can put them in the grass. It doesn't matter. But um, the main thing is to keep the main thing to main thing. What's the main thing, everybody? Loving him. Amen? Yeah. First love. It's everything that, that Etienne just said. But as soon as we get these chairs out of the way, we're just going to put some music on. And you can stay. You can go. But... <coughs> If you're hungry for God, I want you to come up here and, and get prayed for today, okay? And I have to tell you this, too, about Etienne. Um, 
Anytime I invite somebody in that's, you know, prophetic, I don't tell them anything. You hear what I'm saying? I don't tell them anything so that it's, you're hearing from the Lord, not from something I've told. And if you were here last week, you repeated most of my sermon today. Did you know that? Anyway, go back and listen. And I knew you would. I knew that would happen. But yeah, just one more cheer and, 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 then, um, and then we're going to somehow come grab that. And you can stay as long as you want. We have no rules around here. Amen. Uh, and Randy or Derek, I'm sure y'all have some anointing all if you want to bring that up here. Thank oh, you. There it is. just say thank you. We say thank you for what you're going to do right now. Lord, your face we seek. Expectantly. Thank you that you're going to touch us. That you're going to activate us. That we will never be the same again. That you will activate that first love. That peace and rest. That you can declare upon us the same that you declared upon your son Jesus. This is my beloved son. And whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Lord, today we're going to leave this place, this building, as new creations in the fullness of the love and glory of God. And we declare that everything that you charge us to do, we will finish it according to your will and according to your purpose. Everything that we do, we'll do it with passion, with love, as if it's you doing it yourself. We will let your fire come into this place fire of your love. Command the angels to walk this way. Angels of glory. Angels of love. Angels of joy. Angels of praise. Angels of worship. And I declare the spirit of the Lord is upon us. Karabagator beriashatar bababarmani Father, come and clothe us with the perfection of your love. Come and clothe us in your glory. Come and clothe us in your light. Because your word says that we are life and light-giving spirit. That we'll give life, we'll give light, we give hope, we give faith. So that all of creation can acknowledge you and declare Jesus is King. Be glorified. Touch Touch activate, receive it.
fire of God come into your blood. Your consuming fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In his belly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. of your power, your love, your fire. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Touch. And there it comes, consuming. More double, double fire, love, sound, frequency, vibration, rulership. Thank you. 
fire of Yahweh into him right now, that every bone will be in fire, like Jeremiah said. God, stop speaking the name of Jesus, because his fire is in my bones. So, Lord, let that fire come into him. Let that fire come into him, and there it comes. Father, we come and we say thank you. We declare it's all about you. Only about you. All honor, all glory belongs to you. You are the faithful, great I am. You are Adonai, you are Elohim. Should die. You are the God who watches over us. You are the perfection of glory and majesty. You are a warrior. You are a protector. You are the Holy One, the Anointed One. Father, our King, and our God. We thank you for impartation. We thank you that we'll never be the same. We thank you that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. We 
Thank you for the privilege and honor to be able to walk with you and declare that you are the only living King. That we belong to you and you belong to us and that you loved us first. And we want to say thank you and the best way, Lord, to say thank you is not through mere words but through our lifestyles is by living and revealing Christ. Lord, and today we declare your face we're going to seek. We're going to inquire and require of you as vital necessity. And we're going to reveal you. Lord, I bless this house. I bless each and every family represented here today with the fullness of the revelation, the character and the nature of Jesus Christ. I bless them with the blood of Jesus Christ. I bless them with perfect love. I bless them with eyes to see and ears to hear. I bless them with the revelation of power and authority to have a lifestyle. Like Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father in heaven doing. I bless this leadership with love, with wisdom, with understanding, with discernment. I bless them with prosperity in all aspects of life. I declare the fullness of Yahweh is upon this house and each of ev and everybody in this place. And we give you glory in the name above all names, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach.